Hi, we're going to take a look at a new Wireshark plugin that we've been working on at Advanced 7. And uh, it's really quite neat. It does a great job of analysing response times. So let's take a look at uh, the elements of response time. Here I'm showing a browser and a web server. So a browser process and a web server process, the browser being the client to the web server. And what I'm showing is an application message flow from the browser to the web server and then a response coming back. So this could be, say, a GET request followed by uh, a response, or more likely in this diagram it would be a POST request followed by a response from the web server. So let's imagine that the POST request data doesn't fit within one packet or within one TCP segment. And so we may see, say, one, two, three, four packets flowing from the browser to the web service over here. And the transmission of that whole message will take some time based on things like uh, congestion, bandwidth, flow control, TCP window sizes and things like that. All of those things would have an influence on uh, the time it takes to send these four packets. And the time it takes, we call that request spread. And then the service over here, the web service, would munch this request around and then eventually it would send back a response. And so in this case, we see a response spread across three packets, one, two, three. And again, we have a spread value associated with those because that takes time to transmit across the network. The overall response time from the first request packet to the last response packet is the APDU response time, Application Protocol Data Unit. So this is an OSI term, but it really refers to an application, application message. In OSI terms, these four packets here make up a request APDU, and these three packets here make up a response APDU. So we've got APDU response time, first request to last response. The service time is last request to first response. And then we have the spread values, first request to last request and first response to last response. So I hope that's clear because that's sort of key to what I'm about to show you in Wireshark. Okay, so the decode, uh, the dissector that we've written is written in the LUA or Lua script language. I've placed it in this directory on my PC. It won't start automatically when it's loaded into that directory, but actually I prefer it that way because I only want to run this when I specifically want to do this type of analysis. So let's start Wireshark. Now I'm going to look at this trace file here. Um, I'm going to filter it to just look for traffic to and from port 80. And I'm also going to go to uh, packet number um, 1000, simply because I know there's something there that I'm, I'm interested in. Okay, so uh, we have a get here for an image file. You can see now down here, we've got this additional decode, decode area called transom RTE data. And if I expand that out, it shows me that I have a request packet at 1000 and the, uh, that's the first request packet and the last request packet is all, also the same packet so we only have one request. Then I've got the first response and the last response. Importantly what I've also got are these timing values. So you can see that the overall APDU time uh, was 45, almost 46 milliseconds. Service time was around 44 milliseconds and it took about one and a half milliseconds to uh, transmit the data across the network. Now there are some caveats in here actually. The, the service time includes one times a round trip across the network because I'm measuring this actually at the client. So it's measuring first request to last response but it's measuring it at the client. But for the purposes of what we want to do, this is good enough. So I'm going to change my profile slightly. What I want to do is add 
these fields into the column list shown in the packet list display. Now I'm not going to do it with uh, this particular profile because I'll mess that up. So let me use a profile that I've already set up to do this. So in this profile, I've removed the IP addresses simply because I wanted to get more onto the, uh, onto the screen. And I've now added uh, RTE values. So that's pretty neat. So now I can see immediately um, what the values are here. But what's even better is if I now also add transom as a filter term and I apply it, you can see that now I'm seeing the performance of all of the GET requests. What's more, I can simply click at the top of here and I'm now seeing, whoops, let's go to the top, I'm now seeing the slowest. So I'm immediately seeing the slowest requests, the slowest APDUs um, request response exchanges. So I'm getting an instant insight into the uh, performance. So let's reorder that back. Now the question is, which protocols can we actually analyze with this? Well, you can analyze any protocol that actually obeys a set of rules. So let's take a look at that now. Transom will work with any protocol that sends request APDUs followed by response AD APDUs, then another request, then another response. I call this a flip-flop mode. Um, it must do that on each individual stream. If it can send two requests followed by two responses on one TCP stream, transom won't work correctly. I'll show you how we configure that. If we just right click on that particular field and we go to protocol preferences, I'll display the whole of the, uh, the preference set. So we can state whether the trace we've collected is collected on the client side of a, a connection or on the service side. By default, it defaults to client side. That does have a, a small effect on the way uh, certain things are handled. But I'll explain that in a future video. We can decide whether we want the RTE data to appear on the last request or the first request packet or segment. And then we've got this list of port numbers. So these are currently the ports that I've got configured that uh, RTE will be calculated for any connection to a service with one of these port numbers. So you can keep adding to the list by just uh, using a comma followed by another port number. Although you will see in other dissectors the ability to put ranges of ports, say from 20 to 25, with 20 hyphen 25, right now uh, Transum doesn't support that. Let me show you something a bit more interesting. So let's just close that file. I'm going to look at this file here. Now this file is interesting in that here's a post request and you can see that uh, we have several packets or more than one packet in the actual request and then we have more than one packet in the response. So in this case you're seeing that we've got a request spread value and a response spread value. So that's uh, interesting and you can do all the same things as I did before where I ordered things by service time so we can look at the slowest slowest uh, response times. We can actually do it by service time itself so we can look at the slowest actual service time values from whatever service we're talking to. Now the other thing that you can do, now let me move this up a little, we've been playing with an additional feature, generate a trace clip filter. This is a bit experimental as it says but I'll switch it on and what you now see is uh, a filter term that would get you everything associated with this particular request. So if I right click on that value and I say prepare as a filter selected, unfortunately this is why this is a bit experimental. I then have to remove everything up to the first quote and I have to remove the trailing quote. And now I can hit return and now what I have in my trace is just everything for this particular slow transaction. I can 
and you can see that I'm filtering out all of stand all standalone acknowledgements and um, things like that and uh, any window size uh, resets and and those types of things by specifying that I only want packets with um, a non-zero data length. I can simply remove that if I want to look more deeply and now I see all of the acts and anything else that might be causing me problems. So the reason for doing this is that if I had say a high spread value then I can dive in and start looking at actually what's happening at a TCP layer. So the important thing here, and this is the concept that we're trying to get over with transum and the whole RTE concept, you start from the top and you drill down. Most people who are looking at performance of networked applications tend to start from the bottom and start working upwards. The trouble with that is it's, it's, you, you're looking through lots of data and so it's quite a slow process. Whereas with this, I can simply find the areas that are slow and then start drilling down into them. One final thing I'm going to show you. Let's clear that filter. I said that by default, Transum puts the RTE data on the last request packet if you have multiple request packets. So you can see that I've got request packets starting at number four to number eight, but my RTE values are only on packet number eight. Now I can put them on the first packet if I want to. If I simply choose protocol preferences and choose untick this option here that says add RTE data to last request segment, you'll see that it immediately jumps and now I have it on packet number four. And that's useful if you run with, uh, if you decide that you want to run without the TCP sub dissector reassembly function, that well-known function. <laughs> if you want to switch that off or you want to switch off the HTTP reassembly, then you are probably going to want to change this setting. So if I quickly switch off uh, TCP subassembly, uh, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, you can see that now the summary information in the info field now appears in the first packet. Now if I still had this on the last packet of the request then um, I'll show you what happens. Let's just do this very quickly. Uh, add it to the last. So now it's down here on this continuation value. Now if I type in transom you can see that I'm not really getting much useful out of this because um, I don't have the right sort of information over here on the right hand side. So that's why it's good, a good idea to keep them matched if you need to uh, run without the dissector reassembly setting. Uh, yeah, this is a bit quirky at times. Sometimes um, you get problems when you change the filters and um, it seems to upset things a bit. But anyway, you can have a play with that. I told you about SINs earlier on. This is just matching up the SIN request with the SIN response. If I take off, uh, if I take out the filter, you can see there's the SIN request and there's the corresponding response. And you can see that uh, my transom data appears on the SIN request. Okay, I think there's plenty enough to be going on with. Have fun with this. I think it's simple to use and it's a great tool. So uh, just get some experience with it and we'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks a lot. See you soon.